All right, everybody, welcome back to episode 1,418 of SecurityGuyTV.com. For the next guest, Mr. Ted Check, Social Media Manager for the International Foundation for Protection Officers, IFPO.org. Mr. Ted, welcome to the show. Hey, Chuck. How are you doing? Thank you. Good. Now, you, uh, your organization is a nonprofit. Tell us uh, what this is about. This sounds very interesting. Yeah, it was established in 1988 uh, by a man named Ron Minion from Canada, it's now based in Naples, Florida, and it's uh, like you said, it's a nonprofit, and uh, basically we offer a number of uh, educational certifications for uh, security professionals so that they can elevate their careers. Tell us about some of those. I've heard of other organizations sure. that have this sort of thing. So after you take some certification, you get you get an acronym after your name. Right, and we, we've got several of those. We've, we've got the alphabet, too. <laughs> uh, we've got the C- <laughs> we got the CPO, which is the Certified Protection Officer. That that's kind of like uh, that that's kind of like your baseline, your foundation, and then you can you can uh, jump up from there. You can get the SSMP, which is the Security Supervision and Management Program. Uh, you can even get a CSSM, which is a Certified in Security Supervision and Management um, Certification, and then the CPOI, which is the Certified Protection Officer Instructor. So you can see that you can build on things with uh, with the IFPO. And, and we have textbooks, but we also have online courses. And then you, you take an exam and uh, you get your certification. Now, let's define what a protection officer is. That could be a lot of things. Does this involve private security, proprietary security, any law enforcement uh, people involved? Yeah, we use the term uh, protection officer, or, or we also uh, kind of toggle back and forth between that and uh, security professional or security officer. We, we're getting away from the word guard because that is it, it's it's far too limiting for for what security professionals do. Uh, so we, we don't we don't use the, the term guard, uh, but a security professional could be somebody who is ex law enforcement or retired law enforcement or maybe. Uh, they do security work on the side. Could be a side gig for a law enforcement officer. Um, it, it also encompasses, um, say, uh, uh, close protection, executive protection. That could also be a security professional. Loss prevention is, is another profession within security professionals. So you can see it's, it's an all-encompassing umbrella. Do you offer uh, online classes, or do you have to, you know, come to the uh, the school, or how does that work? Uh, there, uh, it's, at least in the United States, um, there's no brick and mortar school. So you you order a uh, you order a textbook, or you could take an online course, and then you would be directed once you've completed that course uh, at your leisure. Then you would be directed to uh, a place where you could then take the test. Um, however, and you know, the word international is in, is in our title. So we're worldwide. We have, we have offices in, uh, we have representatives in England, the Netherlands, the Middle East, um, South America in those places. I believe they do gather folks together and, and administer a test all at once. Um, and they might even, I believe they do conduct classes. But in the United States, you can either do it through the textbook or you can do it online. And, um, yeah, so it's a fairly large textbook, a uh, lot chock full of information. Absolutely. So you guys have been around a long time. You've seen the progression of the, of the industry go from, well, I mean, you know, it was all kind of in-house at one time, right? And then we had private security companies come along. And then they started getting bigger and bigger. Now they're mega size. They're big box companies. Who are some of your your clients is it is it mostly the individual officer, or are we finding some of these large uh, security companies are investing in credentialing their officers? Because really, that's the differentiator, isn't it? I mean, you have two guard companies. One guard company has certified people. One doesn't. Who am I going to pick? Right. Right. It. It. it uh, you know, it is definitely a factor in that. I, I think, and and we find our, our clients. Uh, you know, uh, run the gamut. Right. So, yeah, Chuck, um, you were asking about our clientele. I mean, we have individual security professionals who feel motivated uh, to elevate their careers. And so they will they'll contact us and uh, they will order a course. But also we do have companies that uh, feel the need to 
wholesale, you know, get all of their officers certified. So it, so it, it really, it really runs the gamut there. Um, but I think we're seeing overall, you know, you want to talk about the security industry. We're seeing overall a push for, uh, continuing education for certification of security professionals across the board, whether, whether it be the IFPO, which we would hope that people would, would choose the IFPO or, or other certifications out there. Well, we have to do this. The world's too complicated. It changes too fast. And anybody that's not doing training for their officers is just not, they're not in the game sincerely. That's, that's my personal opinion about it. Now, yeah. I, I understand how we can train to some basic international standards, some basic best practices, but do you get down to the local level and do you train specifically for California? Because California has a very strict requirements, right? Kentucky, not so much. Don't even need a guard card in Kentucky. How do you how do you get the, the training to a point where it's international and local? Are there two different types? Well, uh, Chuck, what the, uh, when you look at the textbook, the textbook is, is designed. We, we've got experts. Um, we've got a number of experts that contribute to the textbooks. And so what they bring a wealth of knowledge, uh, of the, of the industry and, and those principles that they impart in the, in the textbooks can be applied, um, anywhere. There's, there's a little bit of tailoring that we've done. I was just talking with Sandy Davies, who, who is the, uh, the IFPO executive director. And she was telling me in our efforts to, uh, to, you know, to bring the IFPO to the Middle East, there's been some little tweaks that, that have been done. But uh, by and large, you know, you, you can, um, uh, you can use within these textbooks anywhere, uh, because it's, it's a lot of theory and best practices. So when you get to, as far as which states do what, that is going to have to be left up to the to the individual um, security companies. Well, that's they're, fair. They're going to have they're going to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I guess what I was getting at is, let's say, for an example, you have the uh, GD uh, GDPR, uh, right? Restriction of data usage. It's very very restrictive in in Europe on how you can use data. So if a, if a security officer is handling data, he has to do something a certain way. Here, not so much in the mm-hmm. United States, right? But I was thinking, if I've always been a proponent that if you train to a higher standard, whether you need it now or not, you're going to need it eventually. I guess that's what I was getting at, right? So always train to the highest best practices, even if your particular location doesn't care about it. Right, exactly. No, I would, I would, I would totally agree with you on that. And and there's 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 so much in these books, um, and and maybe looking at it. Um, you know, you might think, uh, and I think we've all thought this when we've gone through school, I'm not going to need this. I'm not going to need that. <laughs> exactly. but you never, you, you never know when you might need it and right. you may not even know that you're applying it when you are, you know, it, you, you, it, it may just become part of you and, uh, and you, you just uh, apply it to the, uh, to your daily practices, whether you realize it or not. And, um, I, I think that's, uh, you know, what, you, you talk about the changing, industry, the, how the industry has changed. I think we're really seeing, I think we're seeing more of that than I think we've ever seen before because it's not just, uh, observe and report anymore. We've got, we've got security professionals who are doing the work, uh, their boots on the ground. You know, they, they are the eyes and the ears of law enforcement. They are the first responders because the police can't be everywhere. All at once, I just did a story. Matter of fact, I curated a story this morning about two police officers in uh, Myrtle Beach. They were they were patrol- patrolling the um, the boardwalk there, and they uh, they prevented a, uh, a sexual assault. They were they were able to detect and detain until law enforcement was able to get there and and make the arrest. And, and I think we're seeing more of that than ever before. Well, it's absolutely necessary because there's a shortage of personnel in all areas of security, cyber, physical. And if we don't up our skill set, uh, it's going to only be to our detriment. Ted Check, social media manager for IFPO.org. That's the International Foundation for Protection Officers. Mr. Ted, very, very interesting speaking with you. And uh, good luck to you guys. Uh, I think you're on the right track. Thanks for coming on Security Guy Thank TV. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chuck.